wizard, Harry. As we've gone on, I think we've sort of realised that people quite like seeing the magic and that we can do some really cool stuff with it. Isn't he beautiful? But it's a challenge to make those things look real. Ooh! One of the classic effects we've done that I guess people may or may not question is the enlargement of Hagrid. I mean, I'm not giving anything away when I say that I'm not really eight foot six tall. <laughs> It's not really that mysterious if you think about it, but it's terribly clever. Hagrid is a very interesting one. On the very first picture, they said to me, how good will be Robbie Coltrane? Great, but we're probably going to have to digitally put Robbie into every single shot, and it's going to be one of the most expensive parts of the whole movie. And there was a lot of sort of concern. So I volunteered the suggestion that for shots of his back and shots on the kids, where you were only halfway up Hagrid's body, could be done with a double. We did a lot of math to work out how big can Hagrid be? And it was very obvious very early on that it had all to do with the anatomy of your donor. Whoever you got, his elbows had to be pretty much where the elbows went, his knees had to be pretty much where the knees went, and those measurements dictated how big you could go. And so we did this big search to find somebody. My name's Martin Bayfield, and I play Hagrid the Giant. It's just for the scenes where we need to make Robbie look bigger. And if there are any movements that he can't do, then they bring out the big guy. <laughs> the thing about Martin, he didn't look like a big bloke until he got close, because proportionally he was actually quite a stocky guy. But close up, he's bloody enormous. <laughs> Rugby's my background. I played for England for six years and then through a bizarre sequence of circumstances ended up here. So, international sports in one day, giant the next. So, with Hagrid, you've got Robbie, who's just over six foot, Martin was six foot 10, and we then worked out that if we put him on stilts, we could have a Hagrid that was seven foot six. So that was what Hagrid's size became. And we built this suit, which was a big, flexible, soft body suit. This was all done in great secrecy. Nobody was ever to know, and Chris Columbus said, I don't want to see this until it's ready. So we dressed Martin behind a screen, and they got Robbie in the beard and the costume because they wanted a direct comparison between Robbie and this animatronic suit that we had built. See what happens and basically Martin just walked out. <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's weird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was beautifully designed, brilliantly made up. And what Nick Dubman did on that was really, really something. There was just a hell of a lot of laughing. They just bought it hook, line and sinker. Because you could see them going, Actually, we can use this. We can really use this. Stand by to shoot, please. When we start a new film, you put it on and you think, I'm back, this is great. But the suit itself has changed a great deal. When it started out, the head was what we called a dead head. It was just this sort of mixture of fiberglass and silicon to make it look like Hagrid's head. Then, on the second movie, we went animatronic with the face. We go eye movement, mouth movement. That is unbelievable. And the head started to come to life. Now they can do that. And... and smile. By the third film, we put a voice activation system into it so that Martin could say the lines and the mouth would move. Now, I sound ridiculous as well as looking ridiculous. <laughs> Fantastic. My sister completely freaked out when she saw them. She saw a row of five of them. She's sitting beside me, she's going, Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs>
It is such a work of art. The detail, and you see, I mean, every hair is punched into that head. It's incredible. Time to put on the road again. I've no idea how much the costume weighs, but it's quite heavy and it gets really, really hot. But they've already thought out the problems. They know what's going on. The heads are air-cooled, and then with the body, we basically have a sort of waistcoat with rubber tubing running all through it. So basically, we pump cool water around Martin's body. And because we've made this enormous suit, we've had to make chairs for him to sit on, which are like great big giant director's chairs. Oh, I love this chair. We have to make sure that the pathways are clear, that he can get through doorways. So you need a team of people supporting him the whole time. You have a couple of dressers who get him into the bodysuit. It's very elegant. You have an animatronic engineer who connects up all the wiring and the electronics and then operates the radio control, which moves the eyes, moves the mouth. It's known as Team Hagrid, and yeah, I've been working with these guys now for 10 years, and you make very, very strong friendships. They're a great group. Yes, thank you. So it's a nice way of working, and the suit is great. But the trick is that you're never going to film that close on it, because obviously if you're going close, you use Robbie. Hagrid, you combed your hair. As a matter of fact, I have. And, of course, that actually makes complete sense because it's his performance, his character. First years, come this way, please. Come on, now. But, as with all good visual tricks, it's a mixture. Sometimes you can do it in camera. You can use a wider lens and be closer to the actor and leave the background further away. I think, yeah, the problem here is as, as he walks away, we sell the... The scale right so we have to follow him now who'd like to come and say hello but that doesn't always work so then you have to film the shot without them in and the characters are placed against a blue screen we've had to scale him and composite him from a blue screen and now often Hagrid's in dialogue with some of the other actors or he's interacting with them I wish you could have seen him in his prime Magnificent he was. Just magnificent. All of that has to be carefully worked out so that nobody ever thinks about that when they watch the film. And we also have to make things specially to create the illusion that Hagrid is, in fact, seven foot six. Everything that he possesses, his knife and fork, his kettle, his bed, they're all giant size. And very often you would use a smaller set to create the impression. So it can be digital, it can be practical, it doesn't matter. You know if it's right. That's why it works so well, because people can't see the join. So it's perfect. From my point of view, being involved in, in these films is just incredible. And action! Hi, but I mean, when I first started it, I was making all sorts of mistakes. Dad? I didn't know what terminology was and know what was going on. And if it's not performed right, it doesn't matter how good you make something, it just won't be anything. And the scary thing was that Martin was on the very first day of shooting, the very first film. The very first thing we ever did was at this railway station in the middle of nowhere. And there were paparazzi with cameras up at the top of this ravine. So we put an umbrella over his head, desperately trying for his face not to be seen. What nobody knew at that point was how good a double, in terms of performance, Martin would be. It's actually, believe it or not, quite difficult to match with what somebody else has already done. Because obviously for continuity, all the hands have to be in the right place, the reactions have to be in the right place. And we were kind of learning, as we went along, the two of us, how it would come together. And very much it was me watching him, and then he'd get an idea of what I could do. But the great thing is, because of the way the suit was made, it became quite easy to slip into that Hagrid role and copy what he was doing. And Chris Columbus, he had Hagrid walk along and peer in through the windows of the train at the kids who were in there, just to see how they would react. They were wide-eyed. They were just in awe of it all. It was a huge, huge moment. And that's what I was looking for. When they looked up, they are looking at the giant. And that was the reaction he wanted, you know, because that was the reaction that you'd expect kids to have when they confronted by a giant. 
And Martin, he was just wonderful to behold when he got going. And the final shot of Hagrid waving bye-bye to the train in the first movie, that's Martin. And it turned out Martin was a natural mimic. And in fact, in the first two movies, they used Martin a huge amount. You see Hagrid dragging a Christmas tree. It's Martin. And then on Goblet of Fire, Martin had to learn to waltz. And it's just hysterical. <laughs> You're very good at it. Marvellous. He just bought into it and just brought it to life. Ha! Very good. Print it. For me, it's been a hell of a journey. To get involved in something like this, and this an opportunity is only going to come around once. Finally, I can break free. The world can know. It was a very simple piece of theatre, but it bought them shots. And it was just lovely to watch, because you thought, that's an enormous giant man, straight out of the book, and we built that, that's great.